What if I told you that there's one cell in your body that if you don't have it, you die? And I'm not saying you might die. I'm saying you will die if you don't have it. What is it? Well, keep watching. Imagine watching a movie where there's a team of fighters in a crowded room. There are hundreds, if not thousands of people in that room. Many of the people are good people. But there are some people that just invade this room, and they're bad. The job of the fighters, their main job, is to find the invaders and kill them. I know, things got really dark really quick. But this team of highly skilled fighters, they know that if they don't get rid of the bad guys, those invaders could kill everyone, and they are not willing to take that risk. Fortunately, this team of fighters is extremely skilled at detecting bad guys. And as soon as they detect a bad guy, they start fighting. Well, this exact scenario is happening inside our bodies. There's a specific cell type that can detect these foreign invaders with ridiculous precision. But before I tell you which cells I'm talking about, let me tell you a little more about them as well as how they help your adaptive immune response. The adaptive immune response is how our bodies are able to fight off tons of different pathogens. And when I say tons, I really mean it. I mean, imagine this. We have around 100 trillion different receptors inside of us that will allow cells to recognize just about every pathogen that exists. And yes, I said trillion with a T. And without the ability to recognize and attack so many possible pathogens, any old pathogen can cause a significant amount of harm to our bodies. This level of specificity is just mind-blowing. And our immune response to these pathogens is pretty effective. But how exactly can our bodies recognize and respond to so many specific pathogens? Well, let's set the stage. A foreign antigen enters the body, and when this happens, there are antigen-presenting cells that will basically eat up the antigen through a process called phagocytosis. The antigen-presenting cells would then process the antigen and break it down into smaller pieces using enzymes that are present inside the cell. Once the antigen is broken into smaller pieces, it'll then associate with a specific type of molecule, the major histocompatibility complex, or MHC. The MHC molecule will then take the pieces of the antigen and transport them to the surface of the cell, and this process is called antigen presentation. And this is when these amazing cells spring into action. Now, if you already know which cells I'm talking about, go ahead and put the cell type in the comments below before we move on. I'll give you the answer in a little while, but let's see if you guessed correctly so far. To understand how in the world we can recognize so many antigens, remember, 100 trillion different receptors, I need to share a little bit more about these receptors. These receptors are made up of two chains, the alpha chain and the beta chain. Each of these chains has two main domains, a constant region domain, which is relatively similar between all of the receptors, and a variable region domain, which is the part that's furthest from the cell membrane. Now, as the name suggests, this part is highly variable, and it's this variability that forms the basis for the specificity we find when it comes to recognizing all of these antigens. Now, this receptor is a protein. Proteins are made up of chains of amino acids. And if you change the sequence of amino acids in the chain, you change the structure and even the function of that protein. The variable regions of these receptors are made up of about 102 to 109 amino acids. This gives us a whole lot of possible combinations of amino acids, and that's why we're able to recognize so many different pathogens. Each of these cells has one kind of receptor that recognizes one specific antigen. And what determines the sequence for each T cell? Well, that's coded in its DNA. The DNA in the cell determines the amino acid sequence of the T cell receptor, and as a result, the antigen it recognizes. And that's why this cell, the T cell, and its T cell receptors are so crucial for fighting off foreign invaders. Without these cells, we wouldn't be able to recognize all of these pathogens, and our immune system wouldn't be able to mount an effective response against them. You see, there are about 100 trillion types of T cell clones in the body, and a clone in this case is a group of T cells that all have the same antigen receptor. But each clone is normally present in relatively low numbers. Here's where the magic happens. A pathogen can have multiple antigenic parts on its surface, 
And if that pathogen enters the body, the T cell that recognizes those antigens will get activated. And once that happens, those clones will replicate, increasing in number so that they can fight against that pathogen. So when they're needed, they proliferate. We get more of them. And then they attack. It's a beautiful thing. So, as you can see, T cells, they're very important, and it's a good thing we have them. Without them, you and I wouldn't last very long at all. In this video, we looked at how they're able to recognize so many pathogens, but there's a whole lot more to the immune response. So make sure to hit subscribe, tap that bell icon, and keep watching our next videos to learn more about your body's ability to fight. My name is Leslie Samuel from Interactive Biology, where we're making biology fun, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.